all, I will be discussing self-defense training. Let's show the audience that we have here today. Mom, grandmothers, camera woman, hi China, <laughs> and grandfather. All right. Believe it is at least possible that you or someone you care for will be a victim at some time. That belief is a key element in recognizing when you are in the presence of danger. De Becker, page 10. According to the 2013 Report of Violence in Idaho, the distribution of total offenses included 15 cases from aggravated assault and 67.2 cases from simple assault. Additionally, 57% of the victims were women while 43% were men. Glamiers and Parmenter, 2014. Self-defense requires discipline and practice mental and physical training in order to prepare you for any given confrontation. I'm here to argue that every individual should have at least some degree of self-defense training to protect themselves and their loved ones, should the need arise. So, that being said, have you ever been scared of walking alone downtown or maybe nervous walking to your car late at night once you get off of work? Understanding what true self-defense entails could ease your anxiety and boost your confidence. My father has been a Jeet Kune Do instructor for over 30 years, and his teacher, Dan Inosanto, was a student of the Jeet Kune Do founder, Bruce Lee. I have been raised in awareness and self-defense training my entire life. So, what will I be covering today? Firstly, the fear and anxiety that arises from a lack of self-defense training. Secondly, training in self-defense, such as Jeet Kune Do or Jiu Jitsu, are a great place to start. Thirdly, Training lowers your anxiety, boosts your confidence. It is also a great physical activity, and it teaches discipline and awareness. So, on to my first point, fear and anxiety. Controlling your emotions and focusing on awareness is extremely important. Many people allow their emotions to get in the way of clear thinking, resulting in either overreacting or not reacting fast enough. They are also distracted by such things as your phones, tablets, iPods, or simply not paying attention. Additionally, not everyone reacts the same, so there is also fear in trying something that will not work on an attacker. As Taysen Deshamiru states, in the martial arts, work on technique is indispensable, although ultimately the state of mind or consciousness takes precedence. Deshamiru, page 49. So, fear and anxiety. You're ever walking alone downtown or to your car at night? For instance, especially for women, this is important. You can take a simple object in your purse, such as a flashlight, put it in your hand, and use it to strengthen your fist. So if you ever are attacked, not only can you throw a punch harder, but it also provides stability. Additionally, you're walking to your car late at night, keys between the fingers, always, always a good, good start. All right, so now that I've identified the problem of fear and anxiety, let's move on to discussing the solution, training in self-defense. Jeet Kune Do and Jiu Jitsu are great places to start. On this point, I argue from personal experience. I have been trained by my father to be aware of my surroundings and to, to be confident in my actions, to read what a person might do or their behavior. Also, Jeet Kune Do and Jiu Jitsu are great for men and women because it not only uh, trains for strength and endurance, but also the mental ability to focus and be aware and handle any situation confidently and as appropriate. This includes kickboxing, sparring, grappling, and weaponry. Kali is the Filipino stick weaponry, which is extremely helpful. You can pick up a branch or a plank of wood, anything near you that can be used as a weapon. Additionally, data from page 19 of the Crime in Idaho document of 2013 includes types of weapons involved in crimes against people, including firearms, 372 cases, knives, 448, vehicle, 124, blunt object, 231, and other such weapons, 473 cases. Blamiers and Parmenter, 2014. So now, as I have just explained what self-defense training in either Jeet Kune Do or Jiu Jitsu, or just the basics, I will now move on to the benefits of such training. Awareness, confidence, discipline, lowering anxiety, and exercise are all benefits of self-defense training. 
While the survival factor is an extremely important reason to train in self-defense, there are plenty of other benefits which contribute to personal growth. It lowers anxiety by training you to be aware of your surroundings, about the people who are around you. If anything looks suspicious or you feel that you may fall to be a victim. Additionally, being less anxious leads you to be more confident in your ability to, ven to defend yourself and your loved ones. It's also a great form of physical activity as it trains you in strength, endurance, and quick reflexes. Finally, it disciplines you to be a confident student of martial arts and not a fight junkie, not just how to throw a mean left hook at somebody's jaw. Behind Jeet Kune Do and Jiu Jitsu, there is a philosophy. To be a true student of the martial art, you must embrace the philosophy with the physical training, which contributes to your growth as a person. According to the Zen way to martial arts, intuition, wisdom, physical action are always one. Dishimaru, page 71. So as I have now discussed all of my main points, I will leave you with these last thoughts. Today I covered fear and anxiety from lack of self-defense training. Self-defense training such as Jeet Kune Do and Jiu Jitsu and those benefits. Additionally, the benefits of self-defense lowering anxiety, boosting confidence, great physical activity, and teaching discipline and awareness. So I leave you with this thought then. When it comes to you or them, who would you rather see in an ambulance? As Jiu Jitsu legend Hicks and Gracie says, a strong body is a good asset. A strong mind is a very good